Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're back at it again with another baseline or reference drive with full self driving feature set becoming more feature rich soon with the uh, release of City Streets coming soon, two weeks. I uh, wanted to do another reference drive, another baseline drive to see how it compares to the current iteration of autopilot or for those who just have basic and standard autopilot, whether it makes sense to get that upgrade once these new features are around. Okay, so the first drive we did, we drove you know, from a supercharger to home, assuming that we were impaired. This one, we're gonna do something a little bit different where we're gonna say, hey, we're mid-drive, and all of a sudden, we need to be able to go somewhere else that we need to have full self-driving, where the value of full self-driving comes, comes into play, and that is getting to the hospital. Maybe somebody's driving, maybe there's a scenario where, maybe it's not often, obviously, but you know, maybe there's a scenario where they have a medical emergency and they need the car to be able to take them to the nearest you know, hospital or medical center. Okay, so that's the scenario we're gonna test out today. If you're new to the channel, uh, we're OG Tesla owners, lots of experience in autopilot, lots of experience with Teslas in general. Ask us anything, we know stuff about things. All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about what this drive looks like to get to the hospital uh, from here. Okay, so engaging now. Navigating on autopilot is engaged as you see here. My hand is rested right here on the wheel. But again, if I have a medical emergency, something's happening, I'm impaired, I can't fully drive, what happens? I'm gonna go to speed limit now. I'm not quite there yet. What happens? How can the car help me and assist me to get to the hospital? Having a hand on the wheel is good, uh, but obviously it's doing all the work for me. And true story, I actually had a medical emergency back when autopilot was less capable and I was able to use autopilot to get a majority of the way to an actual hospital. It actually helped me out and, uh, and uh, saved my life potentially. So kudos for Tesla for having this and great for me to be able to have access to it um, in that scenario uh, where I otherwise I would have been in trouble. Okay, so this is the scenario here. It's gonna take this exit, it's going pretty fast. I hope it slows down. It's slowing down now aggressively, but it's slowing down nonetheless. It's gonna get over into this ex path, exit lane, getting over into the exit lane. And it's gonna take this turn. It's gonna tell me navigate on autopilot is coming to an end, so standard oil pilot is gonna kick in. All right, taking the turn very slowly. Obviously, someone behind me is pretty aggressive. It's going, it's going, it's going, doing its thing, nervous-like. Hopefully, it gets a little bit more confident um, in the full self-driving version of this. But right now, it's you know turning a little bit, hesitant, coming to a stop, and it's gonna ask me to take over. So here, I'm gonna take over. Okay, I see no cars are here, I'm gonna signal get in my lane, proceed forward. Again, if I'm impaired, I could do that. I could definitely do that. We're gonna get onto more of a main road here where I can re-engage autopilot. Okay, let's see how it acts. While I'm on local roads, city roads, uh, it's gonna limit me to five miles an hour over and it's gonna take these roads, hopefully, okay. So again, scenario is, hey, maybe I called an ambulance, maybe I called them and tell them I'm on my way, I'm nearby, I'm having a medical emergency. And this is a scenario where autopilot could come in handy to help get you there. Full self-driving could help get you there. But again, we'll compare what the more feature-rich version of full self-driving is going to bring. Uh, but right now, this is what we have, and this is you know the value it can bring as well. Again, on nicely marked roads, if this was an unmarked road, if this was no, a, a non-divided road, um, it probably wouldn't work. And you'd be better off just uh, pulling over to the side of the road and calling 911. But in this scenario, I'm nearby. Um, I think I can make it. Um, it's not as urgent as I, you know, as, an, as, a, as needing uh, medical attention in terms of an ambulance. Some phantom braking here, which I hope is resolved in full self-driving, but it's something that's manageable and allows me to get to the hospital in a safe and efficient way without me having to exert myself to do that. Coming up to a stoplight, it's noticing and acknowledging that. It stays in this current lane. The person behind me is happy to pass me because uh, the car drives, you know, pretty much at the limit and people would like to drive a little bit over. People being people. What can you do? I'm going to use the stalk to confirm I want to go through this light. Again, something you probably could still do uh, if you're impaired or at least use the accelerator pedal. Again, not passed out, not, you know, totally unimpaired or totally impaired, 
A little bit of lane centering here, which I don't like, especially when the lane widens, it still tries to center you, which is awkward, especially because we know it's gonna merge going forward. Uh, the map data and the vision should be able to tell you that, and it should really just follow this yellow line here. Uh, so hopefully they fix that with, uh, with the new version. Okay, still, again, lane hunting, trying to center itself in the lane. That is typically the right behavior, but in scenarios where we know the, the lane is widening, it should follow the center line, whether it's a single line or a double line. And the navigation knows, it knows the path, it knows where it wants to go, so there's no sense for it to center it there. Cresting on a little bit of a hill, you can still see over it. Again, lane hunting makes it a little awkward. Continuing down these winding roads. You see the line sort of extrapolating where it wants to go, where it wants you to be centered in this instance. Now this is standard autopilot in terms of the capability. It's full self-driving, the full self-driving computer, the full self-driving capabilities and options are turned on, but it's effectively autopilot because it's not navigating you. It's not doing automatic lane changes. It's just routing you to the path that it has here on the map. Um, and keeping you centered within your lane. Now this is gonna get funky up here because as you see the road gets kind of crazy, it's gonna be interesting if it actually takes over or if I wind up in someone's house. Either way, I'm doing it for you guys. Okay, a little, little awkward here. Automatically reduces the speed because the speed limit changed and we're limited to five miles an hour over. So it's going 25 miles an hour is the speed posted speed limit. So now it's gonna limit me to 30, slowing down dramatically and uh, making awkward people behind me look to uh, <laughs> beep their horn. Interesting, I have a Volkswagen ID4 EV behind me, which is pretty cool. Tesla, you did it. <laughs> you forced their hand and made them create EVs. This is awesome. Taking these roads pretty good, but again, it's not going fast. But again, I'm trying to be safe. I'm trying to get to the hospital. I'm trying to be safe. Um, I'm not totally impaired. I'm, I'm just slightly uh, in a condition where I can't drive fully or maybe shouldn't drive fully and the car can kind of take over for me. Again, Cresting Hills has gotten significantly better. In the beginning, Cresting Hills was a nightmare. As soon as it saw a hill that couldn't see over, it would freak out and it'd get very scary very quickly. Okay, this ID is on me pretty hard, I'm trying to get to this light before me. I had to disengage a little bit just because the car didn't seem like it knew where it wanted to go. Now, when I disengage autopilot, it doesn't disengage uh, adaptive cruise control, so it will still stop at the light. So it's a partial disengagement from my perspective. Won't let me re-engage until I start. But again, the car has stopped. I don't have any, any, any hands on the wheel or have foot on the pedal, but adaptive cruise control is still active. That component of the full self-driving suite is still active and will still stop at lights. So depending on the car, I'll tap it. I still have to steer now, but once I get into these lane lines, I should be able to re-engage. Re-engage here. I can make an auto lane change here, which is pretty cool. It won't do it by itself, though. That's the navigate and autopilot component of it. All right, so the hospital's coming up right around the bend up here. I'm almost there. There's the signs. Um, so I should be able to make it, no problem. Again, just going very, very slow. And this speed limit has changed, but it won't update the map until I actually pass it, until you, it's the car sees the posted speed limit. So that's the vision-only component of it that they've, they've enabled, as opposed to using a satellite or map-based component of speed, speed limits. Uh, the speed, the map based speed limit is there, but it uses the visual confirmation as the absolute truth. I'll say I want to continue through, so I'm going pretty slow. The emergency room exit is coming up. It's not going to take that, but effectively, if I'm in a situation and I need to be able to turn in here, um, it's pretty much got me all the way. So that's pretty good. A good scenario for a full self driving, not an everyday case, but if you're elderly, you might want to have this available to you in case something happens. Um, if you have are prone to uh, you know, a medical condition, you might want to have this handy um, as it can come in handy to get you to the nearest hospital. OK, let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know you, what you think about autopilot in its current form or full self driving in its current form. 
uh, versus what's going to happen in the future. Did you buy it? Did you not buy it? Is it something of interest to you? Is it something of value to you? Let me know in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.